Welcome to the news on Zodiac with me, Sibongiri Ziambo. First, the headlines. 26 people confirmed dead in tragic accident in Kasungu. Global Fund offers 900 billion kwacha to Malawi for implementation of HIV, TB and malaria interventions. Catholic Relief Services launched technical entrepreneur and vocational education and training incubation hubs. In other news, South Africans pay tribute to favorite teacher William Smith who has died at the age 85. Now the news in detail. A total of 26 people are confirmed dead in tragic accident that occurred today in Kasungu after a minibus collided head on with a fuel tanker. Kasungu police spokesperson Joseph Kachiko says 25 of the deceased were passengers while the other was a pedal cyclist. The accident occurred at Katondo village along the Jinkoma Sante road in the district. Authorities in Karonga have challenged organizations that are responding to natural disasters to liaise with financial lending institutions by providing soft loans. An official from the council, Mr. Victor Piri, told Zodiac yesterday during the distribution of relief items to flood survivors to three villages by Anglican Council Malawi that the provision of soft loans will help to build their resilience by being financially stable. Meanwhile, the Anglican Council says it has set aside 36 million kwacha to reach out to 420 households which were affected by disastrous floods in Karonga and Kodakota districts early this year. The United Democratic Front UDF National Executive Committee NEC is expected to meet today to discuss the new dates of the party's national elective conference. The party's national publicity secretary Yusuf Mawa says NEC is also expected to get reports from subcommittees and amend some clauses of the party's constitution. Essence Jimana's mom. After postponing its national conference, which was scheduled for 3rd August 2024, the United Democratic Front UDF says the new date for the Indawa will be discussed at the party's national executive committee NEC meeting on Thursday, 23rd August 2024. The party's national publicity secretary, Yusuf Mawa, told Zodiac on Wednesday that during the meeting they will also receive reports from all subcommittees and, wherever necessary, amend some clauses of the party's constitution. United Democratic Front uh, postponed its national conference of 3rd August to look at other issues that we thought would not make you know, the conference to be fair and credible. So this week, the uh, National Executive Committee will be having an extraordinary meeting to discuss about the, about the dates of the National Conference. The next meeting will be on this Thursday, uh, this week. We will also be looking at uh, reports from, uh, from subcommittees uh, of transport, uh, subcommittees of food and accommodation, and also we will be looking at issues to do with the, the Constitution itself. We are certain a great area that we would like to, uh, to discuss and see whether those ones can be uh, amended to ensure that we have actually captured the, all members that I would like to uh, compete at the national conference. Meanwhile, Acting National Public Secretary for the People's Development Party, Rose Msonko, says nothing has changed about the 13th and 14th September National Conference. As a party, we made an announcement concerning the holding of our confession, and that announcement indicates that um, we're going to have uh, this confession on 13th and 14th September this year. So nothing has changed, and uh, we are currently working on preparations for this endeavor, and I'm glad to tell you that uh, our preparations are going on very well, and uh, we are hopeful uh, to have um, a very successful confession uh, come 13th September. Political analyst Victor Chipofia has challenged the political parties that are yet to hold their conventions to level their fields for aspirants to contest in all positions, including presidency, to avoid seeing what happened during the MCP and DPP conventions when presidential positions went unopposed to Lazarus Chakwera and Peter Mutarika, respectively. My plea to the other political parties is that as they go to their various conventions, they should make sure that the field play is level. There should be competition at the presidency level, uh, not just endorsing a few individuals. That is not good for democracy. Currently, MCP and TVP have held their national conventions. For Zodiac in Molanche, this is Hastings Mani reporting.
Health Minister Kumbize Kandorijiponda says the country has detected two suspected cases of mpox. The cases involve a 31 year old man isolated at Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital and a 17 year old boy being managed at home. Both are in Blanta with no history of international travel. Dr. Kelvin Mponda, director at Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital, says the results for the first patient are expected in by this by these Tuesday. And uh, Malawi has received a 525 million United States dollars grant, approximately 900 billion kwacha from Global Fund for implementation of HIV, TB, and malaria interventions in the country from this year to 2027. Minister of Finance spokesperson William Zubanda confirmed the development and said there will be a grant signing ceremony between Malawi government and Global Fund officials later this month. Meanwhile, health rights activist Maziko Matemba, while commending Global Fund for the grant, has asked Malawian authorities to ensure the funds are used according to the agreements the country signed with the Global Fund. Kasima Obi has more. The 525 million US dollars which is about 900 billion kwacha grant, according to a statement from the Minister of Health, is for HIV, TB and malaria interventions from 1st July 2024 to 30th June 2027. It says 419 million US dollars is for TB and HIV interventions, while 84.4 million US dollars is for malaria activities and the funds, among others, target to building resilient sustainable systems for health. Williams Banda is a spokesperson for the Minister of Finance, which manages resources from Global Fund on behalf of Malawi government. I can confirm that the, the, the Global Fund has approved the 725 million US dollars grant towards the TB malaria and the HIV in the government of Malawi. They are grateful for the Global Fund. Meanwhile, health rights activist Maziko Matemba has commended Global Fund for the support but urged both government and the civil society to ensure the funds are used on intended purposes only. So we hope for my government will continue as we have done before, because I've done before in uh, adhering to the grant agreement of the Global Fund so that Global Fund in future can continuously go to support. But also internally as the civil society. We have other civil society organizations uh, who will be uh, allocated some of these funds to ensure that there is accountability, but also there is a demand of services. United Nations Sustainable Development Goal number 3 aims to prevent needless suffering from preventable diseases and premature death by focusing on key targets that boost health of the country's population by 2030. For Zodiac in Lirongwe, this is Kasim Aubi reporting. Let's look at how the Malawi watch is faring against major currencies in the world, according to the Reserve Bank of Malawi. That's how the Malawi Kwacha is faring against major currencies of the world, according to the Reserve Bank of Malawi. You're watching news on Zodiac with me, Sibongiri Ziambo. The headlines once again. 26 people confirmed dead in tragic accident in Kasungu. Global Fund offers 900 billion kwacha to Malawi for implementation of HIV, TB and malaria interventions. Catholic Relief Services launched technical entrepreneur and vocational education and training on incubation hubs. In other news, South Africans pay tribute to favorite teacher William Smith, who has died at the age of 85. Moving on with the news, the Catholic Relief Services has launched a technical entrepreneur and vocational education and training incubation hub 
to support the development of students entrepreneurs graduating from the technical colleges in creating jobs. Speaking during the launch on Wednesday at the Longo Technical College, CERA's lead integration official Crispin Magombo said the development comes in response to their research on job creation. The one-year project, which started in October last year, has been implemented in partnership with an organization called SEED, targeting 50 students in the first cohort, 25 from Namitete and 25 from Lirongo Technical Colleges. Magombo explains. The initiative has been super successful. We at CRS um, are working with the youth and we saw a gap that needs to be addressed for the so many youths that we are dealing with. As a country, you know that uh, we have channeled our education system towards teaching and training youths to be able to be employed. We are changing the narrative so that instead of youth being employed, they start to become employers. And this incubation program was meant to address that gap where skills now need to meet what the market requirements. And so at CRIS what we did was to do a market assessment in terms of what is required in the industry and establish what the gap has been and address that. So we have started with 50 graduates at CRIS on this incubation hub. Uh, 25 of them are coming from Lirongwe Technical School and 25 are coming from Namitete. These are the seed that we are starting with. And what we are hoping to do is that they have been trained enough so that they can go out and address the industry needs. Meanwhile, the Technical Entrepreneur and Vocational Education and Training Authority, Tiveta Region Service Centre Manager Joseph Sambaya, says the authority has partnered with the National Economic Empowerment Fund, NIF, and other commercial banks to support the students. For the youth that are graduating for technical colleges, um, the authority has partnered with the NIF, the National Economic Empowerment Fund, and the FDH Bank, so that those that intend to go into self-employment or entrepreneurship can access a loan from these two uh, institutions to allow them to invest in their businesses and move forward. This arrangement has been made um, appreciating the fact that when you graduate from college usually you do, may not have the curatel and many other requirements that a bank would require to, to give you a loan. And as a Tiveta we um, partnered with, this, this, with these institutions, NIF and FTH Bank, so that they can uh, create a tailor-made product specific for the youth that are graduating from technical colleges. The incubation hubs that have been set up at Namitete and Lirongwe and the training that has been offered to uh, instructors in these two colleges, um, enough to prepare the colleges to be able to run these processes beyond the project. And that is already um, an opportunity for us to be able to sustain the impact of the project moving forward. At the same time, we have seen the partnership. Many banks can. We know at some point these young people may want to access a loan, and so these institutions are also there to make uh, it easy for them to access uh, such a facility. But at the same time, we they have also been connected to other institutions. We have heard of CIMED, we have heard of Malawi Bureau of Standards. All these are there to support these young people uh, with their journey into entrepreneurship. And we believe beyond the project, we should be good to sustain the impact. A latest study by Institute of Public Opinion and Research IPO has revealed that telephone interviews are the most effective for data collection during natural disasters. IPO's Director of Training and Programs, Professor Michael Jasukwa, said of the method is that it is affordable as you reduce the cost of data collection. The remarks were made in Irongwe during dissemination of findings of research on Malawi rapid mortality. We can use telephone service to generate data that is going to inform policy making. Uh, we always need uh, data, accurate data, but uh, uh, over time there has been skepticism about using telephones and then generating uh, correct uh, data. 
So uh, let's give it a chance uh, that even telephone interviews would be very important for us uh, to collect data that is important for making decisions. And uh, it's cheaper uh, that way. Uh, in research, you need resources. Uh, so telephone interviews would help us reduce the cost of uh, data collection, but at the same time collecting uh, uh, data that is important for us to make decisions. I would also say uh, that in our country uh, we need to uh, do a lot of our estimations that to do with our deaths. Meanwhile, Head of Research for National Planning Commission Andrew Jamali has held the research arguing that it is critical for the nation to achieve its development blueprint, Malawi 2063. So this is a very important you know, research dissemination forum and uh, you can see that most of the studies are talking about methodological issues. A very important aspect in terms of uptake of research outputs is the credibility of the methodology. And also in that kind of speaking, when we talk about credibility of the methodology, we are also looking at the cost effectiveness of the methodology given the context uh, where within which that particular kind of you know, analysis is taking place. For Malawi, this is very key. One, it is aligned to the national research agenda, which we actually launched in 2022 under the pillar of human capital development, specific focus area of population and the human development specifically addressing the issues of maternal and child health. The Church of Central Africa Presbyterian CCB General Assembly says it has realized 196 million kwacha of the 250 million kwacha budget towards its centenary celebrations scheduled for this weekend in Irongwe. General Secretary for the General Assembly, Reverend Mawi Chirongosi, says they are optimistic to meet the target as people continue to provide funds towards the celebrations at which President Lazarus Chakwira will be in attendance. She says the church is committed to helping government in development projects such as providing education and health services to the citizenry through its structures. On 24th we have a march and a laying of stone at the office, then we will march to civil stadium. We will showcase what we have done as synods in, in different sectors, healthy sector, education, evangelism and development. Then on Sunday, we have the worship service and we'll have the president as the guest of honor who will be present. The CCB is so committed to development, the, to working with the government in development. Uh, we are working with the government in different sectors, education. We are doing education from early childhood education, primary education, secondary education, universities. So far, we have four universities in Malawi, Livingstonia University. Ngoma Synod University, uh, Blante Synod University, and Zomba Theological University. So even in the health sector, we have made an impact because we have mission hospitals and other health facilities from the north to the south of the country. Minister of Tourism, Vera Kamtukuri, says government to ensure that an independent investigation is instituted into the light aircraft accident uh, which claimed lives of two tourists in Kodakuda on Tuesday. She says the accident is shocking but praised the support rendered by communities, government agencies and other players to the dead survivor. Kantukule say this after visiting the survivor, Charlo Remstra, who is admitted at Kodakuda District Hospital. Well, I'm sad that the accident happened, but I'm very impressed with our service providers. I think you have seen how she was taken care of here. Malawi is a warm heart of Africa, and she tells me that uh, from the crash site, the, the community, the way the community was coordinated to rescue them, the way people were, were mobilized to assist her and then take her to the hospital, and the way she was even received here at the hospital, everything, she's uh, in awe of what, uh, of what uh, people have done or the services that have been rendered done to her. And I'm very, very happy and uh, impressed with our services here at the Nkota Koda District Hospital and also everyone, the staff that are working here, parks, uh, our partners, I think you are aware that we are working with African parks in terms of the Nkota Koda Game Reserve and all of that. So everyone, all the hands were on deck to ensure that we provide a support that we could provide. And now I'm even hearing that uh, even at the crash site, the communities have helped to ensure that uh, we are retrieving the, 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 the dead bodies, but also the, their luggage and the actual plane. So for me, this is what it is to be Malawian and I'm so, so much very impressed. We now go to sports news.
Organizers of the annual Mr. Zumba Bodybuilding and Powerlifting uh, competition have secured 500,000 kwacha to hold this year's event on October 15. Bright Limani, main organizer of the event, says they failed to hold the event on July 6 due to financial constraints. Limani said the financial boost from Lirongwe based gym and fitness at Antiasis at Sai Maupingu and others brings to 900,000 kwacha the money they have raised so far out of the budgeted 1.2 million kwacha. We have received the uh, support uh, from uh, Mr. Atusai Maupihu. Mr. Atusai Maupihu carried out uh, some form of uh, fundraising activities in Lilongwe amongst the, the fitness, uh, fitness uh, uh, goers in Lilongwe. Those people who like fitness and they managed to raise an amount of uh, Five hundred thousand, which is half a million, and this money has been pumped into Mr. Zomba competition. Actually, Mr. Zomba competition was supposed to take place on 6th of July, but we shifted it from 6th of July to uh, 15th of October 2024, simply because uh, we didn't have enough resources in July. Yeah, basically, we are about to reach uh, the end of our preparations. We are uh, in a process of finalizing everything. Uh, actually, we are still looking for more people to join as the sponsors. And we are still speaking to potential sponsors within Zomba City and outside Zomba to make sure that we add the numbers of sponsors. Um, we have uh, a deficit of uh, 300,000 kwacha, but we, we still want to um, uh, to actually uh, increase um, money for the tournament so that our boys receive hefty uh, rewards after they have uh, won in different categories. In other news, South Africans are paying tributes to their favorite teacher, William Smith, who has died aged 85. The beloved maths and science teacher and innovator died on Wednesday morning after short battle with cancer, his family said. The renowned teacher hosted a learning program on state broadcast at SABC for years, which is said to have touched the hearts of many South Africans. He received many accolades in his life for innovation in learning, including a national award in 2019 given by President Cyril Ramaphosa for his contribution to teaching and demystifying mathematics and science. President Ramaphosa described the favorite teacher as an education and a cultural icon to their nation. That's all we had time for in this edition of news. And before we leave you, a look at the top stories. 26 people confirmed dead in tragic accident in Kasungu. Global Fund offers 900 billion kwacha to Malawi for implementation of HIV, TB and malaria interventions. Catholic Relief Services launch technical entrepreneur and vocational education and training incubation hubs. In other news, South Africans pay tribute to favorite teacher William Smith who has died at the age of over 85. Visit our Facebook page for more of these stories. I am Sydney Goodbye.